Mr. President, I want to thank my colleague and friend, the Democratic leader, Senator Schumer, for raising the issues of immigration at this moment. We are at a moment in history of this country that I'm sure will be reviewed and reflected upon for many generations to come. Decisions that are being made in the White House today in the area of immigration will be criticized, analyzed, and in many cases repudiated in years to come. It is time for us at this moment to have sober reflection of what this administration has done in two and a half years with the issue of immigration and where we stand at this very moment. This president came to the White House promising he was going to get tough on immigration. Immigration, probably at the heart of America more than anything, has been the issue of immigration. We are a nation of immigrants. My mother was an immigrant to this country. The diversity of our nation, because we've attracted people from all over the world, I believe is one of our strengths, one of our core strengths. This president doesn't understand it. If he does, he's not pushing policies that show any reflection on that reality and that historic background. Think of how this administration started. Within hours after this president was elected, he announced the Muslim travel ban, that he would single out countries with Muslim majority populations and say that their people were not welcome in the United States. The reaction was immediate across the United States. In the city of Chicago, I can remember the supporters of those coming from other countries heading out to O'Hare, attorneys volunteering to give them counsel. It was an outpouring of support for these people, realizing they're fundamentally innocent people traveling to this country. And yet the president, with his travel ban, made it clear from the very start of his administration his view on these immigrants. What followed from there? A decision by this administration to eliminate temporary protected status. 300,000 immigrants in this country who came here because of natural disasters and political upheaval and got protection in the United States. The president wanted to turn them away. Was there any measurement as to which ones might be dangerous? No. All would be turned away. And then, of course, the president's decision to eliminate the DACA program. The DACA program, created by President Obama, so that those who were brought to the United States as children because of decisions by their parents grew up in this country and every day in classrooms pledged allegiance to that flag, believing it was their flag too, learned at some point in their lives they were undocumented. They didn't have legal status in America. President Obama felt, and I, as a sponsor of the DREAM Act, agreed with it and encouraged the creation by executive order of the DACA program. 790,000 of these young people came forward, paid a filing fee, went through a criminal background check, and after they were approved, they were given two years to stay in the United States renewable, where they couldn't be deported and they could work legally in this country. That program, as I said, attracted 790,000 successful applicants, many of them outstanding students, amazing young people. I've told their stories on the floor of the United States Senate. And so President Trump decided to abolish that program and to end the protection for these young people, 790,000 of them. That wasn't the end of it. The president continued with policies such as zero tolerance. Do you remember that one? Last year, when the Attorney General of the United States stood up and quoted from the Bible as to how it was the right thing to do to separate 2,880 infants, toddlers, and children from their parents at our borders. Zero tolerance. Treat the parents like criminals. Separate the kids. And what was worse, no effort was made to track those children where they were placed and what happened to their parents. It wasn't until a federal judge in Southern California came forward and forced this administration to finally match up the children with their parents that the effort was undertaken. And still, more than 100 of them were never matched, lost in the bureaucratic sea of the Trump administration. That wasn't the end of it by far. What we've seen at the border in the last several months has been shocking and unprecedented in American history. This get-tough president, who says he's going to cut off foreign aid to countries in Central America and get tough at the border with his almighty wall, 
has ended up attracting larger numbers of people coming to the United States, presenting themselves for asylum status at our border than we've ever seen. Dramatic increases we haven't seen for decades in people at the border. The president's immigration policy has backfired, and the net result of it we see. Senator's time has expired. I ask consent for two additional minutes. Is there objection? Without objection. Now we have the announcement of the administration that comes Sunday. We will see mass arrests and deportations in this country. Reports from the New York Times that thousands will be rounded up, arrested, and deported. When possible, they say family members will be arrested together and will be held in family detention centers. Have these people committed a crime since they've been in the United States? No evidence of it. Simply the fact that they are undocumented at this moment, many of them could have lived here for years. These mass arrests and mass, mass deportations are going to create fear in communities across the United States, including the city of Chicago, which I'm honored to represent. And for what? It won't make America safer for us to deport these people. Sadly, it's going to mean that their families are going to be torn apart and there'll be more children and families in detention. We were told there's a humanitarian crisis and to, uh, that we needed to apply ourselves and make certain that we had billions of dollars to deal with it. We did, and now the administration turns around and announces a new wave of splitting up families and deporting them from the United States. This is not what America is all about. There is a way for us to deal with immigration in a sensible, thoughtful, rational way. Cruelty has no place in the history of this country and has no place when it comes to the treatment of those who are in the United States today. I yield the floor.